to start, you shut the inlet valve and I shut this outlet valve and then you're gonna bleed these two ports right here. Once you bleed these ports off, you probably wanna open the downstream valve and leave it open. Now that we have the water turned off, there's water still trapped between the two valves. So what happens is it freezes inside of here and you, you bust the internal components inside the anti-siphon valve and you have to replace them. So what you want to do is use these two valves here to bleed the water off. What you can't see on this side is there's two screws and all you have to do is open these screws up to drain them. Turn it like this. You can see my screwdriver was flat up and this way it was crossways which means it's closed. Now I'm just putting it in line with the valve itself and that means it's open. And that should be all I have to do because now the water in here instead of freezing is going to come out of here and just drain out. But this is your supply side so it's good practice to insulate all the way uh, up to the middle of this block valve. Wouldn't hurt to go a little bit higher. This side you can decide to insulate it if you want. Okay, in here is the bonnet. Below here is a check valve. Normally the check valve doesn't get damaged it's the bonnet that does so you buy what you call a bonnet repair kit to get off brand it's gonna cost you around twenty dollars on Amazon if you want the OEM it's around fifty and if you get unlucky and you and you have to replace this whole assembly the Febco valve uh, it's gonna cost you about hundred and fifty dollars some cities and counties you can't work on these valves without being qualified and uh, some, some places require you to test it also after you worked on it. So you need to check your codes to see if you're able to work on it yourself. If you need a video on how to repair this valve, click on the link at the end of this video. Thank you for watching.